Hey, I'm Srini, the creator of Maximize Your Output with Men. Today, we're going to go into a tool that's more than just a note-taking app. It's a game changer for knowledge workers, content creators, academics, researchers, and anyone who wants to turn knowledge into action. Mem is designed to make knowledge management effortless, reducing context shifts, speeding up the content creation process, and even sparking spontaneous insights. It's a tool that adapts to your workflow, not the other way around. And then this comprehensive guide for beginners, we'll explore how Mem can transform your work and creative process making it easy to capture, connect, and recall your ideas. So if you're ready to take your productivity to the next level, let's get started. Let's start with some basics. MEM is much more than just a note-taking app. It's a knowledge management tool that is designed to help you capture, connect, and recall your ideas. How does it work? Well, capturing notes is as simple as jotting down. As you can see here that we have two options. We can either click new note, or we can actually use the keyboard shortcut command control N, depending on whether you're in a Mac or a PC. So let's go ahead and create a couple of new notes. And what we'll look at here is how notes can be formatted. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a note called surfing basics. Now, a couple of things to notice here. One is that like most text editors, you have a lot of basic formatting capabilities like bolding, underlining, italicizing the strike throughs. You can add hyperlinks. The other thing you can do is you can actually add H1, H2, and H3 tags because everything in MEM is in Markdown. One of the most important things that people overlook inside of MEM is how critical a title to your note is. And you'll see why in just a second. So let's actually add a few more notes here so you can see some of the other formatting options. So we're going to add two more notes. We're going to add another one called Top Surfing Spots. And we're going to add, make this our note. So you can see here that we now have a numbered list in this. And in addition to the numbered list, what we can do is we can actually take the list here. And instead of a numbered list, we can turn these into a list of tasks. So basically what you have are three different list formatting options. You have numbered lists, unordered lists, and then tasks. Let's add one more here. So we basically created three MEMS, and now what we want to do is we want to see how we can link those MEMS together. Now that we have created three different MEMS, let's look at one of MEMS most powerful features, bidirectional links. Bidirectional links allow you to make connections between nodes. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new node, and then we're going to link the three MEMS that we created to that new node. So what we'll do is we'll press Control N. And we're going to basically have this note called the Beginner's Guide to Surfing Etiquette. Now, the thing that's cool here is what we can do is just by putting the at symbol in front of the title of the note, we're going to go ahead and link our note on Surfing Basics. So now we're going to add the one for top surfing spots. And then we're going to add the one for Surfing Etiquette. And as you can see here, what we did was we took a note and we connected it to notes that already were inside of the knowledge base. And this is why titles are so important because of the fact that titles allow you to connect things. So think of it, as I said, as Mad Libs for your knowledge base. But the other thing that's great about this is we have this note, but if we click on Surfing Basics, you'll be able to see the content of that note inside the sidebar. And the same thing here with top surfing spots as well as surfing etiquette. Another thing we can do with bidirectional links is we can turn an existing text that is not linked into a new node. For example, let's say that we wanted to create a link for Bells Beach, Australia. Now we have a note, and even though there's nothing in it, at some point we could go and fill this in. So you can see here it even gives us suggestions for how to organize it. And now that we've captured some notes and linked them together, let's explore how to navigate MEM. MEM is designed to help you reduce context shifts and keep you in the flow of your work. So the very first thing that you will see when you log into MEM is what is called the home screen or the timeline. And this gives you a chronological view of all of your notes. The other thing here is you have the option to sort by when they were last modified or when they were last created. By default, it actually goes to last modified. So that way, if you modify something, you'll see whatever the most recent note that you were working on. And you can see here that when you first log in or first sign up for MEM, it also gives you a couple of suggestions. The other thing that you have the ability to do is to create collections. And collections are a way of grouping different MEMS together. So let's actually create a new collection, and we're just going to call this our surfing collection. And what you'll see here is that we can add existing notes, and you'll see here that it even gives us suggestions. So we're going to go ahead and add all these different notes to our surfing collection. 
The other thing you'll see here in the navigation is something called favorites. And favorites are a great way to reference notes that you want to access frequently. And if you look here, you'll see that now anytime we want to access it, instead of having to search, we can actually just go straight to favorites and our surfing basics note is there. Now let's actually explore mem's search function. It's a powerful search feature that allows you to quickly find the information you need. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to search and we're just going to type the word surfing in. And what you'll see here is it's going to give us a list of all the different notes that mention surfing inside of them. Bells Beach Australia doesn't have the word surfing in it. It says that it's related to surfing. So we even see related notes. The other thing we can do is we can sort by whenever they were most relevant, last modified or last created. And then you have some other options. So you can see here, you can see whether it's captured via email, text or imports. And you also can see if any of the notes have links inside of them. So for example, if you had a Amazon book link for one of your surf spots or a surfing book inside one of these notes and you typed Amazon, it would then show you the note that has the Amazon link. Before we dive into the rest of the video, I want to introduce you to something special. It's your first step towards building a second brain with MEM. It's our ultimate guide, which is more than just a manual. It's a roadmap to transform the way that you handle information and unlock the power of your knowledge. You'll get strategies to capture and organize your thoughts, ideas, and knowledge. No more getting lost in a sea of folders. You'll get techniques to retrieve what you need when you need it, so you can say goodbye to endless searching. And you'll get tips to ensure your best ideas don't slip away so that every spark of inspiration is captured. If you're ready to build a second brain in MEM, click on the link below for our free ultimate guide, or just go to maximizeyouroutput.com slash second brain. Again, let's maximizeyouroutput.com slash second brain. Now let's get back to the video. Now that we've covered some of the basics, let's get into some of MEM's advanced features, which are designed to supercharge your productivity and make your workflow even smoother. So one of the things you'll see here is if you click on this top right hand corner, you actually will be able to set up integrations. So if we click here, you'll see you have a couple of different options. You can import notes from existing apps like Notion and Evernote. The formatting doesn't always come through perfectly when you do these kinds of imports. However, if you do import markdown files, you'll see that they come in perfectly. So what we're going to do really quick is we are going to import a, another note here. And this is just a book summary that I have. And what you'll see here is that that note has now been imported into MEM. Depending on how large the file is, that it could take anywhere from a minute to a couple of seconds. And if you go here, you'll see that it's right there. So now let's go back to our demonstration outline. So we've got the ability to also set up a Zapier integration here where you can connect different apps to MEM and bring information into MEM. Right now, there's no way to use Zapier to get information out of MEM. There are a few workarounds, but for the most part, you want to be able to just bring things in MEM. So common use cases might be something like every time there's a new file in Dropbox, create a note from that. The other thing you have also is an API, which is going to be much more advanced. And one of the coolest advanced features of MEM is something called Smart Write and Edit, which allows you to use AI to generate content from your existing notes. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new note and we're going to give it this prompt right here. Most of the time it will work, even if you don't necessarily have them linked. But just to be on the safe side, I always recommend linking notes when you do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our links here. And then what we are going to do is we are going to have MEMS smart write and edit tool basically give us a plan for some city dweller who's planning their first trip. And the way that you do that is you can press continue writing for me or optionally, what we can do is we could highlight this text and press that. And you can see it gives you a bunch of different options and different actions that you can use. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to have it continue writing for us. And what you'll see here is that it's going to take those existing notes and based on that, it's going to give us a title here. So you can see here that it takes a little bit, depending on the length and the depth of your request to MemSmart Write and Edit. And you can see here that basically it has given us a numbered list and we can even give this thing a title. So let's get rid of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually just use Smart Write and say, come up with a title. And what it'll do is it'll even give us a title for this note. So that's MEMS Smart Write and Edit feature. And what it's done is it's taken our existing notes and created a new note from the content within our existing notes. So you can see here that it actually gives us specifics and we've got a, a numbered list here, but we can reformat this as we talked about before in any way that we want. And Smart Write and Edit is capable of doing all sorts of things. You can do data analysis with it. You can revise content with it. You can combine existing notes together. 
You can edit, you can change the tone and style as you can in a lot of the AI writing tools. But the beautiful thing about Smart Written Edit is that it has access to your entire knowledge base. You can link tons of existing notes to it and it will actually use the content from those notes to create the contents. Mems chat feature allows you to interact with your mems in a conversational way. It's like being able to have a conversation with your entire knowledge base. You can ask questions, draft new notes, and even ask MemChat to revise a note for you. While it can't directly create or edit your notes, it can certainly help draft and refine your thoughts. And the best part is that you can access and reference notes from your entire knowledge base, which makes it a powerful tool for quick recall and synthesis. So let's actually have MemChat do something for us. It says, try quizzing me on what I know about from your notes in Mem. One thing that's very important here is you want to make sure that you tell it it's a note titled whatever it is. One of the mistakes that people make, and this is a mistake that I have made too, is for example, let's add book notes. I might say something like, you know, find my notes from this book, Deep Work, and it'll say, I'm sorry, I can't find that. You have to specifically say the title of the note. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually have MemChat put together a surf trip list for us in terms of a checklist. So you can see here now it's given us this numbered list. And basically it not only has access to your entire knowledge base, but it also has access to the web at large. So it pulls from your knowledge base as well as the rest of the entire internet. And here you have an option to either copy it or mem it. If you mem it, it will actually then get saved as a new mem. One thing to note here is that sometimes when you mem it, the formatting goes away. In this case, it didn't, which is great. So maybe that's a bug that's been fixed. And you can see here that it actually has the link referenced in it. So now we've actually explored MemChat and what it's capable of. There's one other thing that I want to talk about, and that is one of Mem's most misunderstood and underrated features. So one of the things you've probably seen throughout, in this case right now, we're not seeing anything, but what we could do is we could just add our surfing notes or whatever it is, right? So we go into our surfing note. You will see here that when we're actually working in the note here, and you've probably seen it throughout, every now and then what you'll see is related mems here. So for example, if we go to the getting started with mem, you'll see here that now it actually shows something like similar to this mem. And this is what is called Memex. And Memex is basically like your personal knowledge explorer. And as you interact with Mem, Memex displays similar Mems in the sidebar. And these Mems are often contextually related to the one that you're currently working on. So it's like having a brainstorming partner or it might resurface notes that you hadn't revisited before or you hadn't thought to use. The more notes that you add to the knowledge base, the more effective Memex becomes. In fact, because of the fact that you need knowledge in order for this to work, it becomes much more powerful. So today we've explored the basic and advanced features of Mem from creating Mems and using MemChat and Memex. We've seen how these features can be integrated into different workflows, helping you manage information more effectively and boost your productivity. Mem is much more than just a note-taking app. It's a tool that transforms your knowledge into action, amplifies your understanding with AI, and extends your creative potential. It's really a partner that helps in your creative process, allowing you to achieve far more than you could on your own. So try out the features that we've talked about and see how Mem can revolutionize the way that you work with information. And remember, above all, the more that you use Mem, the more powerful it becomes.